Do 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 do. Battery lessons with Tim. Meow. Well, hello YouTube. Today we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning. Back to the first day of class stuff. Um, some of the things that I taught in that first video that I did for throwing have changed a lot. And I'm going to go through some of those. Um, but we're going to gear this towards the person that is going to be learning how to throw from YouTube. So I want to give you as much, much, as, much information as I can about the decisions that we make and why we make them. So first thing before we throw is clay selection and preparation. And for this, um, we're going to talk about a couple different clays. We've got a groggy clay, which is not something I would suggest to start out with. We've got a smooth clay, and we have way over here porcelain. We don't need to go all the way to porcelain when you're learning how to throw. It's going to be expensive, um, and it's not much different in terms of hand longevity as any smooth clay would be. Um, I'm going to be wedging and stuff this stuff because this is what I'm going to be using later on today. But um, smooth clay, whatever cone you're normally going to be firing to, if you don't know what cone you're going to be firing to, figure that out before you buy any clay. Um, there are lots of cone six smooth clays out there. Laguna makes 65, which is a good all-around body and fine for throwing. And it's smooth. The reason we want something smooth is that you're going to be spending a lot of time pushing down on the wheel head. And the grittier your clay is, the more this is going to become worn out, unabraded. And you don't want this to be hurdy. <laughs> you want it to be smooth. But we're going to do a couple of things here. Now, in the video that I posted way back in the beginning, I had people cut off the top of the clay and then cut that into fours, which is what I would still have every one of my beginners do. And then take those four blocks of clay and pat them into a ball. So easy. Voila, we're ready to go. But let's say your clay has gotten funky. Like you've left it out, it got cold or something. Maybe it froze. Maybe you have condensation on one side of the bag and on the other. It's gonna be important to learn how to wedge. So I'm gonna do a really rough wedging video. Really rough. So I'm working on plywood. This is a three-quarter sheet, three-quarter inch sheet of birch plywood. Um, birch plywood is going to vary on where you get it. Some people I've I've talked to have had issues with their their birch delaminating some, and that's when things were left on it wet. I've had that too on a piece of like half inch. So don't leave it wet, but it's great for wedging because it's smooth. So for wedging, there's going to be two different kinds of doing this, right? There's ram's head, and there's like shell or cone or horn wedging. Um, for the normal, uh, like sheep's head, ram's head, I'm going to take the clay, I'm going to push it down a little bit, I'm going to lift up, I'm going to take these two corners here, I'm going to put my thumbs on those, I'm going to push towards the middle a little bit. I'm going to lift it up, I'm going to scooch it a little bit, and push down in that same spot. And this pushes this clay towards the middle, and eventually it works to the middle, and then it works its way out and helps homogenize your clay. A sideways view. <laughs> right? The other way is to take that same kind of motion but rather than pushing it into the middle, we're going to kind of pick it up and we're going to take this corner and we're going to push this corner down and then we're going to rotate a little bit. I'm going to try to do it slow. It's hard to do it slow though. So lift up, push down, lift up. You can see me walking on the piece a little bit. And what we want is to be able to cut this up and have it be smooth on the inside. Now, 
It looks relatively smooth, right? The test is squeezing it and pushing that middle out. Now you can see we got a little rip and a little rip, which, as you try to do it on your own, is pretty darn good. Now after you check it, guess what you got to do again? You've got to wedge again. Don't be afraid of checking and wedging. And you'll find some certain amounts of clay, it's easier to do one than the other. This is at like right in between where one's just about the same. As a reference, we're gonna cut this up. I'm gonna squish this out. You can actually see the auger memory in this. That's a little twisty there. But out of the bag, clay is pretty well, pretty well homogenous. Which is why if you don't have to wedge, I wouldn't make you wedge. Okay, pretty good. Okay, then we're gonna take this back ball back up. Cut that into threes. <laughs> Something not close enough. Pat that into a wall. And it's gonna be important that we put it back in the bag. We don't want our balls to stay out and we don't wanna to have to make balls in between. If they stay out, they'll dry up a little bit. If they dry up a little bit, then all that wedging and consistency that we did is all lost. And put that back on, cover it up, and go to the wheel. Now, a little bit before we go all the way to the wheel, the, um, don't blame the clay for your mistakes. Um, I want people to take as much responsibility for what they do as possible. If you end up blaming the clay or your reel or your teacher or, or a YouTube video, then you're not taking accountability for your own actions. You can wedge any of your clay. You can throw with anything pretty much. I mean, I can take the crappiest clay that I can find and I can still throw with it because I don't blame the clay. Okay, I'll see you next at the wheel. All right, so we've done the clay prep and clay decision sort of stuff. Now we've got to get to setting up the wheel. Um, I wish I could give you the perfect height for the wheel and the perfect height for your stool and everything, but that's going to be dependent upon your body and the kind of wheel that you have and the kind of stool that you have. And if you have physical issues like back problems and stuff, there is no right answer for anybody. And I happen to do stuff different than a lot of people. So the only thing that I, I think is important is that the wheel head spins true, meaning that if you turn the wheel on, that it doesn't go whoop, 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 whoop. Everything else is almost like what works best for you. But if your wheel head isn't flat, it doesn't spin true to the shaft, then everything else is gonna be, everything else is gonna be for naught. Um, your bats, I've got a few different bats. Again, pick which one works best for you. I typically like to throw on masonite bats or something that has a little bit of absorbency. Um, plywood would be my next best. And then there are oh, and then there are plastic bats of different variety. I found that plastic bats, especially for beginners, are a little rough around their hands and they have a little bit harder time to keep the clay stuck to it. So using a masonite bat is a little bit easier on the hands, especially when these are newer and they uh they're a little bit easier to get the clay to stick to. Splash pan stuff. Not everybody's wheel has a splash pan. If you're lucky enough to have a splash pan, you want to make sure that your splash pan doesn't rub and that it's deep enough that it's not going to throw stuff all over, but not so deep that you can't reach it. And I don't know the particular brand of wheel, but there's one wheel that's really, the splash pan is really deep. And this one is getting to that point. For me to be able to put my hand in the middle, my leg has to be above the edge of the splash pan pretty high to get over that because this is a big drop. It's like maybe two and a half, three inches drop down from the edge to the splash pan. 
or from the, to the wheel, which you can make up with a taller bat sometimes, or you might just have to adjust how you're sitting. So we've got that. I had I brought the level out because it doesn't matter. Um, some people will say that, you know, if you are having issues throwing, check the level of your reel. And really, if you're having issues throwing, it's probably because you still suck at throwing and you need to practice. That um, blaming the wheel or the bat or the tools or your clay um, is, really just, is really just pushing pushing the issue down the road. And if you take ownership that you aren't good at this yet and that you need to practice, that you can overcome any, you can overcome crappy clay, you can overcome crappy bats. About the only really thing that you can't overcome is a wheel head that's not spinning flat. Um, and like I said, like this is, I'm about a third of an inch off from one side of the wheel head to the other. I checked it before the video started. Um, if you don't have a splash pan, which some people won't, or sometimes you might be throwing with a bat bigger than the splash pan that you have, I would use your sponge. So I would prop my sponge up against the water bucket so that it wasn't going to go flying and will catch the slop before it comes off and shoots off around your studio. You don't have to push it on hard, just a little bit. And tools for the first like day of class kind of thing, all you need is your wire tool and something to scrape the wheel head with. I wouldn't have beginners go out and buy a set of mud, mud tool ribs yet, so the wooden rib that comes in the toolkit would be fine. And a bat. And some clay, which you already prepped. Um, now we'll go to the next part of the video here. So the next part of the video is how you get oriented to the wheel. Let's put the splash pad, splash pan back on. So what I want to be is as close to the wheel as I can get so that I can have my elbow anchor on my leg or my forearm anchor on my leg for my left and right hand. And I want to be as close to the wheel as I can get so I'm not having to stretch or reach. If you have to stretch or reach, then you're starting to lose that connection to your body. We want to keep everything as close as we can get. We want the center of the clay, the middle of my wrist, and my elbow to be in a straight line. And we want my left hand to be at about a 90 degree angle to my right. So we're somewhere around there. My right hand is out here, or my left hand is out here, my right hand is about here. Now if your pedal and your leg isn't tall enough, you can put something underneath both to get your leg above your splash pan. Same thing with your left. Um, some people will put something else underneath their left to make it the same height, but as long as it's above enough to get above that splash pan, you should be okay. Um, you also wanna get as close, as close to it so that when you're putting pressure on, you can actually put the back part of your arm against your body and you can put some extra pressure against your body or against your arm with your body to stabilize that. Um, I try to keep my pedal underneath my knee so I'm not stretching out to, to get to it. Also, most pedals, um, they pivot in the center as well. So if you have your knee right over it, it's easy to change the speed without your leg moving too much because moving your leg with the speed is gonna change how much or where you're pushing the pressure here. Um, you'll see sometimes on tall pieces, I'll actually rock and you'll see my arm just kind of slide off my leg a little bit because um, it, it makes a difference. You actually are pushing on your body to stabilize your hands. Um, my stool is not level. My stool tilts forward a little bit. If you, don't, if you didn't build your own stool, you can actually take just a board and put it behind the back two legs. And that keeps your pelvis tilted a little bit forward so that you're not bending so much um, at the waist. You're kind of, your whole body is tilted forward. So initially you might feel like you're falling into the clay, but you get really used to it. And I find it a lot more comfortable for a whole day of throwing if I'm tilted a little bit forward. And you'll counteract all that if you put your block up too high, because then you're just kind of, you're kind of going like this and hunched over again. You kind of want to open that up a little bit by pushing that pelvis the bottom part of your, the bottom part of your legs here down a little bit. If you're sitting right on the back of your back of your butt, that's not going to make much of a difference to it. Okay, to the throwing part. 
Thanks for watching. If you guys haven't already hit the like button, slam that like button. If you're watching for the first time or you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.